Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for SPIRIT, the stimulating program initiative for retirees that inspires thought. I'm Judy Steinig, Director of Community Programs for the Orthodox Union, and it's my honor to coordinate and host this program. The OU started SPIRIT several years ago as an on-site program, and now we're happy to present it as an online program for retirees, not yet retirees, empty nesters, baby boomers, sandwich generation parents and seniors, everyone who is looking for educational, intellectual and spiritual growth. Now during the pandemic, SPIRIT has become the perfect way for, e for each one of us to engage in a virtual setting. Today, we are very happy to welcome back Elaine Bodenheimer to the SPIRIT Forum. Elaine has been teaching and writing about gluten-free cooking for over 18 years, and she's going to have some wonderful recipes and techniques to share with us. Elaine previously presented gluten-free baking and gluten-free Shabbos for the Spirit Forum and received so many wonderful compliments. You can watch those videos uh, in the Spirit Archives. We are very happy that she's joining us today to demonstrate fabulous gluten-free Purim desserts. It's my honor and pleasure to turn the Spirit Forum over to Elaine. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back for Gluten-Free Baking. And um, this time, since Purim is right around the corner, I thought we would do some wonderful desserts in honor of Purim. Now, this year, Purim is on Friday, so I don't know exactly how many guests we're going to have. And with COVID, I don't know if we're going to be having a lot of people anyway, but I hope that many of you have received your vaccine and you will be able to host some guests. So let's get started. And a couple um, on the first video that we did, we uh, had a basic chocolate cake recipe and we repurposed it several times. We're gonna do that again, except this time we're gonna start with the basic sponge cake. And we're gonna use that to make something very elegant, which is called tiramisu. And we're also going to make a roll cake. The roll cake actually will be kosher with Pesach and you can use it for not only for but Pesach. And you could make the tiramisu without the tofuti cream and just use the regular filling that we're using for the roll cake and make a tiramisu also for Pesach if you like. So let's get started. Uh, sometimes people have trouble with roll cakes or with sponge cakes on a cookie sheet. And um, that's when I've used flour. Sometimes I've had problems peeling it off the paper, but for some reason, this recipe, I've never had trouble peeling it off. If you have trouble, don't worry because we can use it anyway and I'll show you how. Okay. So first, uh, we're gonna take out the recipe and this, this recipe is sponge cake and we use it for jelly roll and for tiramisu. It has six eggs separated, six tablespoons of sugar, six tablespoons of potato starch and one tablespoon of vanilla sugar. And whenever I go shopping for paste, vanilla sugar is an item that they always have. So you should not have a problem with that. Um, potato starch, this is very interesting. This holiday that's coming up, Pesach, is your best friend for gluten-free baking. Why? Because everybody has potato starch for Pesach. This is, happens to be Hadar, but they have Geffen, they have Mishpacha, they have Manischewitz, a lot of, you can usually get potato starch. Now, what I do is I stock up on potato starch at pace of time for the whole year. Nothing will happen to potato starch and I've kept it from year to year too. So that's not a problem. Uh, and I know that in places outside of the big metropolis areas, sometimes you can only get potato starch around pace of time. So if you're going to get into gluten-free baking, which I hope you will, um, if I were you, I would stock up on potato starch at that time of year. Okay. So we start with six eggs. We're going to beat the egg whites until they're foamy, add sugar slowly until the whites are stiff. Then into the same bowl, this is a uh, whisk attachment that I'm using in this bowl. And we're gonna fold in the egg yolk, the potato starch and vanilla sugar. And then we're gonna spread the batter onto parchment lined cookie sheet. I'll tell you a word about that in a moment. Okay, so let's start. We're gonna start with our egg whites.
and now we're going to add the sugar. Now we're going to turn the mixer down to low because when you fold in ingredients, that's on a low speed, not high speed. So just going to make the egg whites a little stiffer. Okay, now I'm going to add the egg yolks and put them in until it just mixes them. And then I'm going to add some potato starch. And the vanilla sugar. Okay, now. Okay, now. Um, the size cookie sheet that I use to spread this on, first of all, I preheated the oven to 350, as it says on the recipe, and I'm going to show you this cookie sheet is a half sheet cake, meaning if you were a professional baker, you would have a quite a large cookie sheet, and this is called a half sheet. I got this at Correcus, but you can get it anywhere, and this measures 17 and a half by 13. It's not those little cookie sheets, okay? If you want to do it on a little cookie sheet, then you have to adjust your measurements, okay? Let me show you the cookie sheet that I have. Okay, here's the cookie sheet. I've lined it with parchment paper. And in order for the parchment paper to lie flat, I spray the cookie sheet first and then lay down the parchment paper. And as I mentioned, I have preheated the oven. So we're gonna pour the, um, scoop out the batter onto here. And then we're going to bake it in the oven and it says for 22 minutes. So keep an eye on it at 20 minutes because every oven is a little different. I'm going to make sure this doesn't fall into the sink. I'm going to scoop this onto the pan. Here's the batter. Now, if you have an offset spatula, I had a large one, but it disappeared. If you have an offset spatula, that is the best way to smooth this batter onto your pan. Okay, so I have to use my small one because I can't find my large one. Okay, I'm smoothing it on here and try to make it as even as possible because when you're going to use this cake for jelly roll, um, for a roll cake, a jelly roll, whatever you call it, um, you want the, bat, the cake to be somewhat even. You don't want it to look kind of funny, thick in one spot and thin in another. If you're going to use it for tiramisu, which is the next recipe we're going to make, then you don't have to worry that it's not perfect because tiramisu cake, the cake for the tiramisu is very forgiving. And I'm gonna tell you a little trick that you don't even have to bake a cake to make tiramisu. 
Okay, so we're going to put this in the oven, which is preheated at 350, and set the oven for 22 for 20 minutes and keep an eye on it after 20 minutes and see if we have to bake it another 10 minutes. This is what it looks like when it's spread out on the pan, on the cookie sheet. Okay. Okay, I set it for 21 minutes just to split the difference. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you what this cake looks like when it's finished because I pre-baked the cake so that I, we didn't have to wait for this to be done in order to do the next step, okay? Okay, so when the, that cake is done, it looks like this. All right, it's a beautiful one layer sponge. And it, um, it's a light brown color. You don't want it too dark. You don't want it because you want to be able to roll it when you're going to make, use it for roll cake. And uh, we're going to do tiramisu. As I said, for tiramisu, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to have to turn out great. And I'll get rid of the foil. Okay, here's what that sponge cake looks like when it's all done. And originally I said, wait for the cake to cool and then peel it off the pan. But I just discovered, I looked at a video recently and actually it peels off a little easy, more easily if you do it with when it's slightly warm. So take it out of the oven, let it sit a few minutes before it cools off, start peeling the cake off of the parchment paper gently from one end and then the sides and then towards the middle and very gently and it will peel right off of that parchment paper. So that's a very good um, a trick because as I said in regular um, roll cakes with flour, for some reason, I've always had them crack. And this one, this with potato starch, it doesn't crack, so thank God for that. Okay, now I'm going to show you, since we're going to use cut this in half in order to fit it into the, um, into the pan, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to get a knife and we're going to cut this in half so that each half is about eight by 13. Okay, so this is 17 and a half by 13. Let me get a knife. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half. You can eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we've got two halves of this sponge cake. Okay, each one is going to fit into the bottom of the uh, tiramisu pan. So let me get that tiramisu pan. Okay. Here is the pan for the tiramisu. It's a nine by 13 pan. Now a word about um, interactions. So the first thing we're going to do is spread some jelly on the bottom of this pan. And that's why I put parchment paper in here because this is a metal pan and you don't want to put jelly onto metallic, especially if you're, if you're going to use a metal pan or if you're going to use a disposable pan, always line it with a parchment paper because you don't want the jelly, which is acidic, to interact with the metal and then it's sometimes turns green, which is not beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna take this sponge cake and we're gonna lay it in the bottom of this nine by 13 pan. It's got a little extra room. Now, if you're using a disposable pan, then you're gonna have extra cake left over. And so what I do is I cut off the edges. I put them into a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. As I mentioned before, you never throw away um, anything gluten-free because you can always use it for something. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna talk about this in a minute because I wanna start making the filling because that takes a while to beat up, okay? Okay. I'm just going to wipe out this pan because it's got much of the same types of ingredients in it anyway. Okay. Now. All right. Now let's 
look at the recipe for the tiramisu. Okay, don't get scared, it's not too many ingredients. We're going, you know, a mala la mala, mala and codish, like they say. We're starting off with something very simple, which is the sponge cake, and then tiramisu is a little more complicated. And we get the hamantash, and don't be put off by all the ingredients because it comes out really good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is combine a quarter of a cup of water and pudding in a small bowl, okay? So, Here's a quarter of a cup of water. And here is the three tablespoons of pudding. Now, I used um, lemon because I happen to like um, lemon. You can use lemon or, oh, this is actually vanilla pudding. I like vanilla pudding in tiramisu. I like lemon pudding in roll cakes. So we're gonna do tiramisu. I like uh, vanilla, but if you like uh, lemon better, that's fine. It should be like a, more of a neutral pudding. And you mix it. I use instant pudding because it'll dissolve rather quickly. One time, um, I used to get pudding at Walmart. One time, they all they had was regular cooked pudding. And I put that in and it was fine too. So instant is a little better, but if you don't have it, you can use the regular pudding. Just make sure it's tired if you're making a tired cake. Okay, here you've got the mixture of the pudding and the water. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do, I mean, after that, we combine the water and the pudding and we mixed it until it was dissolved and it was smooth, we set it aside. Now we're gonna take the cream cheese, which is actually tofuvi. I guess if you wanted to make this milk, you're welcome to make it milk. I think the original recipe was actually milk but I like making everything pyrus because this way I can serve it for a Suda or a Shabbos or anything. And when you leave it at room temperature, it becomes very soft. Obviously, if you have people in your family that are allergic to soy, you're not gonna make this recipe. Unless they can have dairy, in which case you can make it with real cream cheese and not so fruity cream cheese. Okay, I put in one package of cream cheese. Now we're gonna add um, a quarter of a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to mix it on high until it's smooth. <laughs> That doesn't take very long. Okay. Now we're going to add the pudding mixture to that. And you'll see when this sets, sits for even for a minute, it's going to get very thick, which is fine. Okay. Add with topping. Okay, now we have 16 ounces of I use rich and whip and have any kind of whip. I happen to like rich and whip the best. Um, it keeps up the best and has the best taste. Shake it up. Now, sometimes when we're in a hurry, if we have frozen whipped topping, and maybe tempted to put it in hot water. Don't do that, it won't taste well. So what I do is I usually take it out the night before and just put it in the refrigerator. Okay, now I have to put this on high. I'm going to move over here just because um, it's going to be too noisy over there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start making, setting up the pan for the tiramisu. So the first thing we do is take the 
some jelly that you can mix, preserves that you can mix with liquid, with water. to hear can you just okay, okay. It over the okay is that better all right so we, we take this nine by 13 pan and and lined it with parchment paper and and now we're going to take a little bit of these preserves and put them on the bottom now be very careful because when you buy preserves Make sure they're seedless because if you get regular like raspberry or you know um, blackberry preserves, very often they have seeds. So make sure it's seedless preserves. I prefer preserves to jelly because jelly gets too liquidy. And we're going to spread a little bit of these preserves on the bottom of this cake. Okay. check how that cream is doing. It's still beating, so we're okay. Here's the jelly on the bottom of the pan, which has parchment paper on it. And then um, we're gonna take half of the sponge cake and put it right over the jelly. Now, as I said to you, if you're using a disposable pan, the cake is going to be a little big for the pan. Just cut off the edges to it fits into the pan. And as I mentioned, if you cut it off, you never throw away anything gluten free that you make, but you're going to have a use for it at some point. I'll tell you um, some of the uses of sponge cake. You can, you can make a trifle, get a beautiful trifle bowl, and look up a recipe for trifle. You take those little sponge cake and use that for the cake. Take strawberry slice and put it around the inside of the bowl. Alternating whipped cream, blueberries, make some gorgeous dessert that's gluten free. And everybody can see that what they like. Look it up anywhere on, on the web, uh, trifle, and just use the sponge cake for the cake part. Okay? Okay, now, the second thing we're going to do, we have to put down this first um, layer of cake, is we are going to spread half of the cheese mixture on top of it. So let me go over to the other counter and get the cheese mixture. Okay, here we are. Now we're going to take this cheese mixture, which has gotten nice and thick, and we're going to take half of it and put it over the cake. Now I'll tell you. Just lost it, Judy. You're fine. We see you. We see you. We hear you. I don't see anything. Hold on. We see you. You're good. It's fine. Okay. Well, I don't see a thing. Now, Lane, keep going. We can see you and we hear you. Okay. So we're going to take this cream and we're going to spread it over the 
sponge cake. Okay. I want to tell you a little secret. So um, if you don't feel like making a sponge cake and on Pesach, especially before Pesach, you can uh, get lady fingers, then buy as much lady fingers as you want. And you can always use lady fingers because most tiramisu actually call, uh, call for lady fingers. I make it with sponge cake because if I can't get lady fingers, it's much easier to use this because you can make it at any time, okay? Okay. Okay, now we're gonna spread this cream on top of the cake. Like that. This is my family's favorite dessert. Whenever we're going there or they have something special that they want. I say, what do you want? Tiramisu, tiramisu. Now, very often you will see a recipe uh, for tiramisu that calls for coffee. That's the standard tiramisu. It has coffee cream and, um, uh, and lady fingers. As I mentioned, the lady fingers you can get pay some time and have them all year. And, um, and you can make this with coffee if you like that. Children very often don't like the flavor of coffee. So this tiramisu is called strawberry tiramisu. So after we put the cream in here, the next step is to lay um, sliced strawberries on top because they like that much better, but you can do whatever you want with your own family. Now, I'll tell you another secret. I happen to have bought fresh strawberries, but if you don't want to patch your man with cleaning them and checking them and all that kind of thing, then all you have to do is go to the store and buy a bag of frozen sliced strawberries, and you can use that at the center of this. So let's do that. Okay, I'm laying them in rows, but it's not, you're not going to see this anyway. You just want to. You just want to be able to um, have the taste of strawberries. So if you scatter them, it's okay too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put thick layers, but in a single layer, you can scatter them. Put them as close as you can because everybody wants strawberry in their piece. And I think about one and a half cups of strawberries should do the trick. I have a little more in the bag here, but it's not something that needs an exact measurement, as you see. As long as everybody gets um, some strawberry in their piece. Okay, so here's what the center looks like. This is just the middle of the cake, okay? We're not getting anywhere yet, it's not to the end. Okay, now we're going to take the other half of the sponge cake, which we made by cutting it in half. And here's the other half. As I said, it's about eight by 13. Okay. Now this particular pan is an exact nine by 13 pan. So I have a little extra room on the side. That's just fine. You see, it, it's fine. Nobody will die if you have an extra, you know, an empty spot on the side. So here's the next layer. Now we take the rest of the cream cheese filling and put it on top. Okay, we're gonna take our offset spatula and smooth it out. Now I'm going to show you the decorative part, which is really pretty. 
And that's what makes it an elegant dessert. And when people get this, they say, oh, wow, that is beautiful. Wait, you're gonna see something very pretty. Here's the top, which is just the cream on top of the second layer of cake. And I smooth it out just so it'll be even. Okay, now, here we go. Here's the cake, the cream on top of the cake, on top of the strawberries, on top of the cake, on top of the jelly. That's all the layers, okay? Now we're gonna do something very cute. Okay, now we're gonna take a little Ziploc bag, right, like this, and a sandwich bag or whatever. There's your cake. And we're gonna take the rest of our jelly, our, our preserves that we mix with a little bit of water and pour it into this Ziploc bag. And let me just go take the cake out of the oven. Okay. Now we have this jelly. And we're going to scoop it into a corner of the bag, all right? If I don't have enough, then we'll just take a little more. And we're going to get a zip, uh, scissor and snip off a corner of that bag. Now, we're going to take the bag and squeeze out jelly on horizontal lines along the long side of the cake. Okay, now this is the part that's going to make it very pretty. Here are your horizontal lines. Now I'll show you something really pretty. Now take the toothpick. Actually, my daughter Shipper told me that my daughter Shipper is a professional baker. You take the toothpick and go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you have a beautiful design on top. And there is your tiramiso. So you've got Let's see if you can see, ah, oh, that may be a little nicer. Okay, it's not perfect. And depends how you, how you squeeze out the jelly. So if the jelly is very smooth and you take a little more than I did and you'll get four or five perfect lines and then you can go up and down like that. And you have very, very pretty design on top of the cake and you have a beautiful tiramisu. Now, this cake freezes beautifully. You can make it in advance and freeze it. Um, I'll tell you a little trick how you freeze it or how you store it all together. Okay, I made one before, so you can see it's also not perfect, but whatever. I, I made this one in a 
Pyrex pan. And if you're doing a Pyrex, you don't have to um, you don't have to line it because Pyrex does not interact with the jelly on the bottom. So you can just make it without parchment paper. But if you store it, what I do is I put toothpicks. Can you see the toothpicks? I put toothpicks here. They can see it from the side better. I right. I put toothpicks inside the cake and then cover it with saran wrap. And this way, the saran does not mess up the design on top. And I cover it over the pan and you can freeze it like that. And then when you take the plastic off, you still have your very pretty design. Okay, so that's tiramisu. Okay, the next thing we're going to make is um, a jelly roll. Okay, so I just realized that I have to clean out this bowl. Okay, so excuse me for one second. I'm gonna clean this out. And actually, basically the same stuff again anyway, so I'm not gonna clean it that well because I'm basically using the same types of ingredients again. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here again. And all we're gonna do is beat up whipping cream and put in some vanilla pudding, uh, lemon pudding I'm gonna use this time, okay? Okay, let me get the recipe so I don't forget anything. Okay, so here we're going to take 16 ounces of power of whipping cream and um, instant pie filling. Okay, here we go. Shake this up. That's feeding. I'm going to say a word about this sponge cake. So I have, I made an extra sponge cake. So we're going to use this for the jelly roll. As long as we're waiting for that to be, now I'm going to say a word about the topping. All right? So when I make the topping on this cake, I put on some vanilla icing, and then I cover it with sprinkles or toasted coconut. The first toasted coconut, there's a trick to toasting coconut. 
take coconut from the bag, you put it in a dry frying pan, you don't have to put it in the oven, and you just mix it with a wooden spoon until it gets nice and brown, and you have toasted coconut, which will put on top of your cake if you prefer that to sprinkle. Okay, let's see if our batter is working. Sorry, that's going to take a little bit longer to heat up. And our next recipe, after we do this, we're going to do hum and crush. Now, hum and passion are going to be a little tricky only because you're going to need different ingredients. So I'm going to turn that down so you can do that. Okay, just um, in terms of letting that heat up a little bit more, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ingredients and an unusual ingredient that we're going to need for hum and passion. And this is something you may have to order. This is called Rochico Sweet Rice Flour. Okay, it doesn't have to be this brand. Any sweet rice flour is fine. You can order this from Amazon. And um, in case that's too much of a patch, they're going to ask me if I use regular rice flour. I have not because these kind of come out really, really good if you use this uh, any type of sweet rice flour. So also a finer rice flour. Rice flour can become gritty. You don't want that case of grittiness in your cheese. So this happens to be an excellent one. And the other ingredient that we're going to use for the first time now in our sweet baking is phantom gum. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, up until now, I've avoided using xanthan gum because it's a specialty ingredient for gluten-free baking. But for hamantashi, you're really going to need it because xanthan gum is the glue that replaces gluten in gluten-free baking. This is one of the types you can get. It doesn't have to be Bob's Red Mill, any xanthan gum. So I'm just talking about that now in advance of our next recipe while I'm waiting for that cream to beat up that. Okay, so I think the cream is actually ready now. So let's go do that. Okay, so back to our lemon roll cake. So here is the cream beaten up with uh, lemon pie filling. Okay, it's two containers of cream and three tablespoons of lemon pie. Now our family, we are pretty um, partial to lemon, but you can make this a chocolate roll, you can make it a vanilla roll, you can make it a struggle, a coconut cream, any kind of cream that you wanna put into this cake, it's up to your own um, preferences. And as I said, in our family, we're partial to lemon. So we put lemon in there, but people like chocolate cream, people like, I don't know, coconut cream, banana cream, whatever kind of cream you like in your roll cake, you are very welcome to do. Oh, can't see what I'm doing. Hold on. Here's the cream spread out over the cake, okay? Okay. And it's better if you spread this with an offset spatula, which I did not do. I just spread it with, with a spreader. There's the cream. Okay, now, let's see if you can see this. I'm gonna put this down so you can see how I roll it. Okay, because that's cute. You roll it a long way. And you take one side like this. And you roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And you leave the seam on the bottom. This one is oozing out a little bit, but that's just fine. If it oozes out a little bit, it doesn't matter. 
Okay, now, now you can see the cake before it's decorated. This is the roll cake, okay? And I did it so the cream goes all the way to the end. So this way everybody gets a piece of cake with cream. Okay, now we take our, 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 our set spatula again. Take our offset spatula again and take, I think I have a half a cup of icing. Now I'm using vanilla, you can use chocolate. And I just took store-bought Duncan Hines icing or Pillsbury, Pillsbury and Duncan Hines both have power of icing. And they're gluten-free. You know what, I wrote a half a cup, I think, we need more. I think we should put three quarters of a cup or even a cup. So I'm gonna change the recipe because I want it to be a little more. I'm gonna go get some more icing. Okay, live and learn. There we go. We got more icing. Yep, I think I'm going to put a whole cup in the recipe. You don't have to be stingy with icing. And that really is just to be glue for the sprinkles to adhere. That's all you need the icing for. Okay, here's the cake. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Here's the cake with the icing. And now, I'm going to take the sprinkles and sprinkle them all over the cake. Colored sprinkles, or as I said, you can use toasted coconut, which I happen to love. You just take regular coconut, put it in a dry frying pan, and toast it till it's brown. And here is your jelly roll cake, your lemon roll cake. Okay, and this one is strictly social attention. Enjoy. Okay, now we're up to humming fashion. Okay, so let's go back to our mixer. And now, I'm going to, now I'm going to um, show you there are a lot of ingredients in hamantashen. Don't be put off by that because these hamantashen are worth it. They're really worth it. I don't know what gluten-free hamantashen costs these days, but probably a dollar a piece. And this does not cost that much, although xanthan gum is pretty pricey ingredient, but um, you can use it for many things. Xanthan gum, is, as I said, is the glue that replaces gluten in a lot of gluten-free recipes. Cake, I've you know showed you how to manage making cake without gluten, without xanthan gum, but things such as muffins or breads or a pizza or things like that all require xanthan gum. So if you and these hummus fashion, so if you will be doing gluten-free baking, it may be worth your while to invest in one package of xanthan gum. It could run in the States for $11 a package, but you use very little each time, maybe a teaspoon or two. But I've had people say, well, I left out the xanthan gum, but the thing didn't work because it just wasn't holding the batter together properly. So let me get my mixer and get all the ingredients that we need for common fashion. Okay, be right back.
Hashtag. Gonna get the mixer. started. Okay. First thing is, in a large mixing bowl, beat margarine until creamy. Margarine is two thirds of a cup, which is one stick plus two and a half tablespoons. And one beat margarine until creamy. We don't have to do that too high so that you still hear me. Okay, because of the room temperature, it's leading up very easily. Now, I'll tell you something interesting, and I've done this many, many times. I decided I want to bake something, and it says room temperature margarine, and I didn't think about taking it out earlier in the day or the night before. So um, I wouldn't take it out the night before, but you know, earlier that day, and I have ice cold hard margarine. So what I do is I stick it in the microwave for maybe 10 seconds. You have to watch it carefully. Don't let it get liquid because then it'll kill the recipe. Get it till it's just soft enough to be and it's equivalent to room temperature, but just watch it, maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and you'll be okay anyway. Okay, so we put in the margarine until it was creamy. We're putting in, I'll just tell you all the ingredients because it's said it each time. One cup of sweet rice flour, which I discussed with you. A teaspoon of xanthan gum, which I also discussed with you. A teaspoon of unflavored gelatin. That's, I use this kind, just unflavored, not uh, strawberry or raspberry. Uh, an egg three quarters of a cup of sugar, a tablespoon of rice milk, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon, a quarter of a, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of tapioca flour, half a cup of potato starch. That all goes in, in to make the batter. Now I have to get an egg. I did not take out the egg before. Okay, now we're gonna put all those ingredients and let me just say a word about tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is another one of those ingredients that is uh, very useful in gluten-free baking. It's sometimes called tapioca starch, sometimes it's called tapioca flour, they're the same. As opposed to potato starch and potato flour are not the same. Potato starch is uh, potato starch. Potato flour is potatoes that have been ground up, dried out and ground up, I think. But do not substitute potato flour for potato starch. Okay, potato starch is just potato starch. Tapioca starch is sometimes called tapioca starch or tapioca flour. Those are the same. Okay, so we're going to put everything in here and we're not going to have to wait for this because I have um, the dough that's already made. Okay. We're putting all these things in here. Uh, add rice flour, dance of gum, rice flour, dance of gum, elephant, egg, sugar, rice, and flour, vanilla, and salt. Okay. Until well combined, 
cover with plastic wrap and refrigerate for four hours or overnight. And I did that already. So this is what the dough looks like. It looks like, um, I don't know, like pie crust dough. Okay, now I'm gonna divide the dough in half and chill half of it in the fridge because if you take it all out at once, the other, some of it is gonna get very soft and hard to roll out. So I have a, um, uh, a low counter where I do my rolling out of dough. And if you have that, fine, if not, not. And if you wanna, you can roll it out on parchment paper or you can roll it out on a, a counter that you can uh, sprinkle with confectioner sugar. You can, if you put confectioner sugar onto the parchment paper first, it will make rolling the dough very easy. If it gets too sticky at any point, just add more confectioner sugar to it. So we're gonna go over to that low counter and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now, if you can't see what I'm doing, um, I don't care if you don't see me, I'm gonna show you how the um, how the batter how the dough looks like on the counter in a minute. Okay, let me get the confection of sugar. Okay, now. First thing to do is sprinkle our counter with confectioner sugar. Or as I said, you can sprinkle um, you can sprinkle confectioner sugar onto parchment paper. Anything to make your dough not sticky. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle it right on the counter. But as I said, you can do it onto um, parchment paper. It's more important for you to see the counter than to see me. So we're going to take half the dough and spread it and, put, and roll it out right on here. Okay, this recipe makes a beautiful dough. Here's the dough. Okay, it's a really nice dough. And when you put it down on this counter, you may have to keep adding confection or sugar because you don't want the dough to stick. That is the plan, not to stick. Okay, you can even spread, uh, you know, spread some confection or sugar onto your rolling pin. And if you've ever made cookies, this is cookie dough. Oh, it's very good. Okay, I'm gonna put on more. It says sticking is not recommended. Okay, this is great. You see, put it down and it even comes right up. Okay, now we're gonna roll out this dough to a quarter of an inch. You don't have to measure it. And of course, depending on, okay, it's starting to stick a little bit. Put some more sugar under there. Yeah, I should have used parchment paper, but I didn't. No. Okay, there we go. All right, now, if you've ever made cookies, this is basically making cookies. Okay, it's still good. It's still, it's still not sticking. Okay, great. All right, now, Depending on how big you like your hamantaschen, you will use whatever size cookie cutter you want to use. I like two and a half inches, but that's my own preference. But if you want big hamantaschen, obviously you take a bigger cookie cutter. If you take small ones, you can take small ones. Okay, so now I take, I like this one with the fluted edge. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to make a few and you'll get the idea. When you cut out cookie dough, cut them out close to each other and then you don't have a lot of unused dough all at once. You can make a lot at one time and not waste 
the edges. So this worked out pretty well. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, take the rest of the dough. Okay, now any leftover dough, you just roll it up and you're gonna roll it out again. So you'll have plenty of hum and dash. Okay, now I'll just take this and roll it out and I'm gonna put it aside. Now I'll show you what we're gonna do with the filling. We are, in our family, we are partial to mine, but that's because we're older. But the younger folks like apricot, they like raspberry, they like cherry, they like chocolate chip. So whatever you wanna put in your hum and passion, party hearty, okay? Do whatever your family likes. Okay, I actually went to a bakery because I looked for mine filling. And the ones that are commercial, the, the good ones are very expensive and the not so good ones are cheaper. So I said, you know what? I'll go to a bakery. Maybe he'll sell me some mud filling. And he did. So for two fifty, dollars I have a half a pound of mud filling. Okay, so we also have apricot. Most people like apricot, so we'll do some apricot. And we take about a half a teaspoon of filling like that. And I'll put my computer down again so you can see how to do this. And I put some filling in the middle like this, like that. And I forgot to say to preheat the oven to 375 when you're ready to roll out your dough. Okay, now here's how you do it so they turn out looking like hum and passion. You take one end like this, and you take another end like this. And you take the third side like that. This one wasn't so great. And you pinch them together so they don't open up when they're baking. You pinch them together closed, then they won't open up when, um, and a half a teaspoon, I did a little bit too much filling. A half a teaspoon should be just right. One, two, three. This one came out really good, so I'll show you this one. Ah, just flipped over. Okay, here you are. You match it together like this, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. And the less filling that shows, the better it will be. It won't all come out. Okay, there's that one. And here, I'll take a mine one. Or you could, some people like prune. I think you also have to be able to like prune, but I don't know. Okay, and here you have a mun, hamantash. Okay, you pinch it and leave very little showing and that will mean that it won't open up. Now I'm gonna show you what they look like when they have been baked at 375 for however many minutes I said on there. Yeah, I said 17 to 20 minutes. It obviously depends on your oven. Some ovens are a little hotter, some are cooler. And I'm going to show you what the hamantash look like when they're done. There you are. Beautiful, gluten-free hamantash. Well, I hope you enjoyed this program. And I hope you won't be afraid to try these recipes. They're a lot of fun to make and more fun to eat. And you don't have to go out and buy five little gluten-free hamantash. You can make a whole bunch of them and make your gluten-free family very, very happy. Happy Purim to everybody. Elaine, thank you so much. It, watching you do it, that tiramisu, beautiful, just gorgeous. And the, the hamantaschen, and the, I, I really love watching the lemon roll cake. That's because I happen to personally love roll cakes. They look beautiful. They look super professional. And you gave us so many tips and tricks along the way. We Wonderful. We thank you so much. We wish everybody uh, who is trying these recipes that they should be as delicious and beautiful looking as Elaine's. And also, I'm sure it'll take some time for people to get it. That'll be fine. But we thank you so much, Elaine. And we thank everyone for joining us and getting ready for Purim.
Take care, happy everybody. Happy Enjoy. Birthday. I hope you have able to have company. Thank okay. you, Judy. Okay, thank you, Elaine, so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, the, re the recipes for all of these you should have received already because they're, they're going into the link with the recording. So if you're watching this recording, you must have the recipes. Okay, take care. Have a good day. Everybody be health, healthy and be safe. Amen.